This is Horsepower Heaven Television, presented by Parker's Chrysler and sponsored by Automax USA. When you attend an event the size and scale of the Lucas Oil NHRA Canadian National Open with the intent of producing an event video, you must go in with a plan. The trouble is, even the best laid planning can sometimes stray off course. Our plan going in was to capture more of the human level by keying on a few of the races. But after two days of racing that encompassed some 17 classes that took almost 24 total hours to complete, well, our plan of featuring just a few people expanded into what you're about to see here. Many of the people on this video are old friends, while others we're speaking with for the very first time. Of course, some of them are more comfortable than others when a camcorder is pointed in their face, but they all have something interesting or entertaining to say. We're trying something a little different this time around. You won't see all the final rounds. You won't even see all the winners. But what you will see is a plethora of people who share a common bond of acceleration in a straight line. The so-called little guys and gals of the sport, without whom drag racing would simply not exist. Now before you think this people thing is going to take away from our usual action video, allow us to introduce you to Neil LeCelt. Almost exactly 10 years to the day the Kelowna top comp pilot became the all-time wheelie king at MRP, he made a return visit and qualified number two in spectacular fashion. Then in round one, he turned a bit of an early leave into the photo opportunity of the weekend. King again. Do I get the I get the Willie King prize? You got it, man. It's that uh, little uh, family-sized mug you got there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a family. The family gets to drink 52 ounces. So the thing kept going higher and higher yeah. almost every run. And uh, coming up is Super Cup Mike Jr. Oh, sure. I tried to drive to it. Butterflies are, still open. <laughs> Butterflies are still open. I still don't think I can drive through this. The headline feature cars at this race were four Nostalgia AA Fuel Alterns. Affectionately known as Awful Awfuls, they're more famous for their wild and woolly antics than for sheer performance. This weekend we got a bit of both. And after listening to what a few of the people who live their lives around these things have to say, you'll better understand what fuel alters are all about. Uh, my father and I started running the original car in 1966. We ran it until about 1974 and uh, got married, had children, took care of those obligations and in 1999 made, uh, made not the mistake, but made a large move to the hot rod reunion and got the bug again and uh, had it put back together uh, in the summer of 2000. We got to go back to Boise a few years ago. You got the all-time flame record, man. Well, yeah, we we definitely had some flames over the top. What was the deal on that night? Well, actually, we broke uh, a cap inside the rotor, and uh, the bag was just dancing around and making crazy flames. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for bringing her out again, Randy. And you got one more hit. You got another 200 in this thing. You betcha. She's looking good, and I'm ready for another one. light the sky up with uh, some header flames and I think we did all right for a little bit. Uh, Randy and I decided to drive in the same lane. That was mainly Randy's choice. I actually considered going over in his lane since he was liking mine so much, but uh, he got back and that's great. That just fueled off the race and we had a great time. Yeah, that's kind of what you guys do. and uh... We do. They only make us start in separate lanes. That doesn't mean we have to drive there. So uh, we have a great time doing it though and this is a great bunch of guys to be with and I'll tell you, Mission, the people here are just wonderful. The Nash 
61 Dave Benjamin here with a brand new car. Dave, uh, is this a debut race for this thing? This is definitely the debut race. I am substituting driving on it because my nephew Tom Padilla is the uh, owner and he will be the driver of it. As soon as he gets his license, he needs one more run. So I'm just doing shakedown runs to make sure it'll run a six for him. So that, that uh, little bit of a zany one uh, first hit yesterday, that was the first time you've taken this thing down a racetrack. That's amazing. Yeah, well, that was, uh, that was a little bit of a fun ride. I was cooking down through there about half track. My helmet covered up my eyes. The air caught underneath it, covered my eyes up, and it was blind as heck, you know. By the time I got my helmet down, I realized I was all the way in the other guy's lane. This ain't the place to be. So it was like first time in a road here in a while, you said, and you weren't, didn't quite have it tight or what? Oh, I, I did I forgot about the air on the helmet. I've been driving funny cars for so long, you forget about some of those things. You know, I didn't have my skirt tucked underneath my jacket and, and just little things. I didn't have the chin strap tight enough. You know, little things you gotta remember, you know, when you get your head out in the open air at 200 miles an hour. How long have you been driving fuel cars, man? Since 1972. And you're in the Aldridge now, and you still doing a bit of the funny car stuff? No, I'm, I'm, this is kind of my last race, I think. I've uh, already told the guys of the Impulse that I'm not going to drive anymore, and my nephew will be in this one. I'll be tuning it, and uh, I've been doing this long enough. You know, I, I don't mind getting out and sitting on the outside. This is kind of a neat way to end up, you know? So this is your final race? This, as far as I know, is my final race. Wow, wow. That, we didn't know that. I, I mean, know, all, these, all things deal. change, you know? It just kind of depends on... On, on, on what the question is, you might say, but I, I, I don't really don't plan on driving too much more. But you never say never. Oh, I never say never. But when you're 62 years old, there aren't a lot of opportunities to drive for other people. So. This thing some fun or what? Always fun. You know, when you're driving a roadster, there's always a smile on your face. Congratulating! That was a hell of a pass, uh, especially for uh, that's about the third run on that car. So uh, they did a hell of a job. And uh, Davey's a smart guy, a good driver. Yeah, I was uh, glad to welcome him back in the nostalgia ranks, and he's going to make a, a great asset for the program. Uh, seeing about uh, half a dozen more of these cars being built, especially ones that have history uh, like us and the Rat Trap and Bradford and, and Benjamin. Uh, we ran Dave Benjamin in uh, Albuquerque Dragway in 1971. So almost uh, over 30 years ago, uh, we ran Dave Benjamin in a few of all three, so. And we got to go back and say, uh, you know, there was a time not too long ago, just a few months now, that we weren't sure we'd ever see this car back again. But man, you guys have come back and just bigger and better than ever. Yeah, unfortunately, we had uh, two catastrophic uh, crashes on the car, destroyed uh, uh, the car both times, uh, once in Boise and in uh, the one in Gainesville in uh, this March. Uh, but since we don't know any better, have nothing else to do. Uh, uh, we decided to go ahead and you know not let the car die, and we put it back together. And uh, uh, my son and Rick is the crew chief, and and his brother-in-law is the driver. Uh, uh, tell us about your new driver. Uh, Vince uh, Genelau is, uh, like I say, uh, uh, Rick's brother-in-law, and uh, he'd been running in Hawaii quite a while. He's uh, licensed in uh, Top Alcohol Funny Car and Top Alcohol Dragster, and uh, he's got a dual license, and uh, he's uh, wanted to upgrade, and uh, he's also the chassis builder who rebuilt uh, this car. So he actually has built this car, and we felt that he deserved a chance and tried to keep it in the family, which uh, works well for all the traveling and, uh, and very capable, very capable. So as Nook and Nasty pulled in for their final runs of the weekend, the tears in the eyes were not just because of the nitro in the air, but the thought that this could well be the swan song for one of drag racing's legends. 
but Dave Benjamin go out being nasty or nice. On the bumper or on fire? It'd be neither, because Nasty Dave hit one right out of Mission Raceway Park. Also running were a group of 11 top fuel Harleys led by Canadian Ron Howney, a 10-time national champion who came out on top in a thrilling final over John Breckenridge. Guy. We were down watching nice. that field from about a thousand foot and, it, and people were talking like, God damn that hound, he never gives up. It ain't over until it's over, until the fat lady sings or something like that I heard before, right? Man, you just blew the tire off this thing and still went 208 miles an hour. Well, the race isn't over until it's over, Larry. You know that? Anything can happen before you hit the finish line. I saw his motor go quiet. And I knew that I had a chance still to go get it, and that's what happened. Boy, I got the win. I'm a lucky guy. And you set a new track record. Ran in the 40s at Mission. That must be cool. That was good, yeah. I, uh, I wish I could have run late last night, but it just wasn't going to happen last night. I got a lucky break again there, but uh, I'm just happy that we got the whole thing finished. I got, got the win. I got a Wally this weekend, so it's a cool deal. Wally, record, money. Boy, what a cool deal. And there was an organization running this thing. Tell us briefly about that. Yeah, we... Uh, some of the top fuel Harley guys got together here and we'd like to run with NHRA a little bit more and uh, get out with a different crowd and etc. and get out in some good track conditions here. WHRA, Western Harley Racing Association. We got a race there. We run IHRA in Edmonton here a, couple, a month back. We run this event and we got one more coming up in November in Las Vegas. So it's a good deal for us and we got some sponsorship and some people behind it. So I'm hoping for some more in the future with that. Alcohol ranks were certainly not left out at the open, with dragsters, floppers, nostalgia, and even pro mod represented in a bewildering number of classes. Instead of trying to sort out all the results, here's a highlight package that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt the locals can put on a pretty damn good show. One of the stars of the show was Kim Parker and her Mercedes shop top alcohol dragster. Hi, Larry. Kim Parker, holy cow. Uh, they, they didn't book in any wheel standards this weekend, but... Uh, I was trying to make a little extra money. Uh, man, it, it calmed it down for today, or...? Yeah, they... I would tell you the secret, but I'd get in trouble. Hopefully it'll stay on the ground when I take off. Yeah, we've seen that thing in the wheels in the air a few times before, but not quite like that. No, no, and you can't run, a, run fast when it's like that. Well, good luck, girl. Thanks, good to see you. Trying to make a few laps in, do a little testing, you know, have some fun, you know, it's always good to come up to mission. So, so tell us about this car, what is it? Uh, it's a hard car, 2001 hard car, total full heads, KFX blocks, just uh, trying to run it on an uh, easy budget type deal, so. How many more times in 2006? Uh, a couple more races, that's about it. Limited schedule, so. Would you like to do more? Um, I don't really have time to do much more. I'm too busy with the kids and everything else, work and stuff. So, stay, stay, stay having fun, staying local. Woodburn Mission, Seattle. That's the racetracks to go to.
right. We just went a 557 at 257. We've never went a 550. We went a 561. We went 249 quite a few times. Never any 250, and we just went 257 and change. So, <laughs> has that been a goal? Something you think about, or is it that's on the board inside the trailer? Yeah. Now we got to put some other numbers up, but it's, that, that was our goal for this year. When did you start? When did you go to your first drag race? I well, I'm not sure when I went to the first one. I drove a dragster in 1956. I drove a Ford. Where? Where? I drove a Ford Abbotsford Airport. I drove a Ford pickup in 1954 at Abbotsford Airport, and been kind of in drag racing ever since. Well, that's like kind of almost day one in the Northwest, huh? It's back there quite a ways, Jess. <laughs> I've seen lots of changes. And this has become a real family thing for you guys. Uh, the kids the, driving, went in a funny car for a while, but man, it's looking real good in the drag. Yeah. And uh, our crew right now, the two main guys on the crew are both grandsons of mine. Uh, right now, there's a, a sister-in-law, I mean, a daughter-in-law here, and two grandsons and son. And woohoo! So, and how old are you today, Bill? Seventy years old. I don't know when I'll quit. And then there was hometown driver Paul Julian, who laid down one of the best runs ever for a Canadian top alcohol dragster. And that was Ken Cross from Great Falls, Montana, giving us a scare in funny car qualifying, losing his parachutes, going into the sand trap, and as they say in drag racing, putting it on the beach. It just was on a nice, nice pass for for the long time. It was nice and smooth and straight. Uh, got to the top end through the chute, and I just felt a bang and a jerk. And then I was not island down. I don't know if it jerked the body simultaneously and got the throttle hung, so I pulled the fuel shut off. And started hammering on the brakes. And then I seen the end, and it was like, yeah, shit, we're here already. You ever gone into the sand like this before? I, medicine had, I went off into the weeds. That's the worst I've been. So, been pretty fortunate, I guess. So, what, what was the feeling? You went into the sand, and the car was sideways. Did you throw it sideways at the end, or did it just It was that bouncing it pretty end? good, and I seen the net coming, so I just kind of cranked, and it did its on its own. It just, little turn, and it turned. Well, it's good yes, to see you're, you're okay, so. Yeah, thank you. Up, 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 Tony. Take it over here. Over here. Amazingly enough, not a whole lot of damage to the race car. They got it all repaired and cleaned up, and we're back racing on Sunday. Wild Cow Racing Team from Manitoba was here for the very first time in this really cool, unique dragster. They qualified number one in Top Com. Cliff Fox, uh, just out of uh, south of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Man, you come out here with a, a really unique looking dragster. Uh, explain the deal behind all this. Well, about three, four years ago, we bought an empty uh, rolling chassis. It used to be top alcohol drag, but uh, it had an open center. It just had the cockpit, just had a little fuel tank up front. Well, we left it that way the first year, but after I started really looking at it hard, I thought, let's fill this thing in, but why well, fill it in like everybody else's? So we got a little bit creative here and uh, started mocking up with cardboard, raised it up, and we thought this really looks cool. Local uh, machine shop builds fire trucks, they had these little punch things for the louvers, we put those in, kind of like a little shark thing, and then that's the way we left it. So, and, and everybody in the mission here stopped in and said, that is cool. <laughs> anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back 
in the number one position. And Western Canadian nostalgia doesn't get much cooler than this. <laughs> to Corey Kincaid and this, uh, is this a mock-up of a Gordy Bond car or is this a real deal or what? The body we think is a real deal. Uh, it's a tribute car we call it instead of a... Uh um, like a tribute car. Yeah, a tribute to make sure everybody appreciates what they did in the past and to try to get us some recognition for what we do now. Yeah, so what was the idea behind it? Uh, did you always like the 240 Gordy car or did you plan that or what? Yeah, it was my basic first memory of drag racing up in Edmonton. We saw it for the, when they shot the movie and it was kind of the cool thing to do being from Red to the same hometown. came out pretty good. And how long have you been running this car in this configuration? Uh, this is our first year in the bubble up paint job, otherwise we ran it as the wild card, as a burgundy and black firebird. And we understand that the uh, IHRA race in Edmonton a couple of weeks ago, uh, yeah, you were a bit of a hit going down half track with the front wheels in the air. Well, I had to show Gordy how it was really done. <laughs> he was at that race, right? You bet. He was backing me up and uh, coaching me. Worked out pretty good. So, and Bonin was always known for some of those wheel standing passes, top speed stuff. Uh, he would do the occasional cool burnout, but I gotta tell you, man, that first uh, that first round today, man, you took that thing almost to the lights. Well, this time we will take it to the lights. <laughs> you gonna do a bigger one for us? Oh yeah. Now we got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Who are some of the people you gotta thank for this thing? Oh, uh, my family, my crew, uh, Chris Fabricating Shop, Flair Truck Bodies. Everybody's helped me through the years. Jim. Carl Colin, Cody, Aaron, my mom and dad, obviously grandparents. And this organization you run with, it's a pretty cool deal, huh? Yeah, uh, we broke uh, Friday night testing, blue tranny. We're still got this is the part we couldn't put in, so I just kept it on the finger to make sure it's in the car. <laughs> uh, the crew that we ended up winning against in the first round, the half of them were over here helping us get the train together and one of the other crews we just met that were from the Kamloops area. Everybody's in here thrashing with us. Well, it's a real pleasure meeting you guys and uh, man, we can't wait to see even a bigger burnout next time. You bet. I'll, I'll be waving at you when I go by. Thank you. And a guy we didn't actually get a chance to meet, former sprint car driver Tim Boychuk drove the wheels of the happy hour race in Vega. Literally. Unfortunately, Boychuk's wheel-standing antics took their toll, and though he was okay, the car was done for the weekend. And out of the many dragster versus funny car versus pro mod races we saw, none of them were any more unique than this pairing between former West Coast pro mod champion Trevor Lowe and a two-time NHRA Division VI top alcohol champion Mark Kent. I think it's funny car and dragsters. Hey man, a string of uh, 620s, uh, if you didn't get your 
easy, but man, you got to be a happy camper. We were trying. We were trying. We had it loaded up pretty good. It just kept spinning the tire out there. Every time we got through the second shift, it was spinning in sections near the finish line. It was it was hopped up, so it was fun. And some of the bracket guys are saying, I hope he doesn't come out and run that thing in Super Pro. Yeah, I know. I know. 620, 620, 620. <laughs> it would have been nice to have a 620, 230 miles an hour. Come here. Say hi, man. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. Is this your first Wally? This is my first Wally. Well, that's kind of cool. I, I actually never ever thought I'd actually ever get a Wally. Uh, it's it's uh, it's cool. All, all my kids are here. I got our crew, and we just uh, it's awesome. We were just coming out to test. What do you think, Colton? One of the groups here racing was the Alberta-based International Blown Alcohol Association. The 750 Index Nostalgia Funny Car Program features a number of great-looking rides. But we were really taken by Eddie Plasier's one-of-a-kind 1937 Chevrolet. Well, it's a 37 Chev based off uh, the Danny Rowe uh, superior glass body. Harold Parfett and myself wanted to uh, get into funny car racing in the Nostalgia series. So we've seen uh, Danny Rowe's Pro Mod and we wanted to take the Pro Mod body and uh, do uh, a lot of modifications to get it to fit the funny car chassis and uh, this is the how it turned out. And there are a ton of modifications. Just, just show us a couple of things on the side and the windshield here. Uh, what we've done is we've added 14 inches from the front cowl into the into um, the front of the part, put it in here, had to line up all the doors. We cut four inches out of the windshield and then we also extended the back the back roof line to accommodate for the roll cage. And then we had to build the back back deck lid. The other things we had to do is we had to line up all the body lines from the 37 Chev to have the doors match and everything. The one thing that we find unique about this body is that on the underside you don't know where it's been extended or modified. And it, the people have responded to it, it's just, uh, I mean this thing, it looks good in pictures but it's amazing in real life. We're, we're very proud of it and uh, without uh, Harold and Ace Manufacturing, uh, they funded the whole, uh, the whole program for us and it was, um, they let us do what we wanted and uh, this is how it turned out. And it's been well received by the fans and, and all the people, the car shows, um, it's been, we can't, we're so excited. It's and been this, a, this is a one-off piece. Yes, it is. Uh, we never made a plug, and uh, just uh, we don't want anybody else to have this. It was our idea. Um, it's kind of um, a dream of of a couple people, and uh, this is their um, Harold and Dave Parfett. Uh, their dad built. Um, he was a bit of an inventor and built something in 1937, a snowmobile, and this is in memory of him also. But there's much more to Team Ace Racing as daughter Francesca drives an 8 second Super Comp Dragster and son Casey this wicked cool Super Street shoebox. Well I've been driving this for a couple months now. We've been building the car for about a year and we just debuted it at uh, Powerama this year. Tell us a little bit about it. Where did it come from? It's an uh, Edmonton car be uh, built by uh, Keith Jakes and Dave Moore. It's got a 436 small block Chev and uh, power glide in it. And you did the junior dragster thing for a little while and I understand uh, while sister is in that dragster, you're a door car guy. Yeah, always the door cars. Why is that? What's the difference? Dragsters always go straight. The door cars are more fun. Did you learn much about driving something like this from the junior dragster? Well, from the junior dragster you learn a lot about the staging and uh, how to play at the top end. That's how you get your lots of experience. And what's been the most eye-opening thing about moving from that to this? Just you're racing with all the big guys. It's neat. You got to do the big burnouts with the smoke and everything. A big difference from the juniors. And what's your eventual goal in drag racing? Race pro stock. Really? Yeah. That'd be neat. Um, I would have to say the most difficult part is the top end racing. It's in juniors you don't do it as much, but now it's you have to learn how to play with the guys at the top end. And then when you say play with the guys at the top end, what exactly do you mean? Oh, just with uh, with braking and if you're in front of them, you don't want to take the stripe by too much, and then you don't want to take it by too little, and you have to work that out. So there's a lot more to it than just cutting a light and trying to run a number, huh? Yeah, there is. And as far as mechanical work or anything, do you get involved with that? or A little bit. I usually do a lot of the maintenance, but I'm starting to learn a lot more about the engines. 
Now, is that something that you've always been interested in, or have you always wanted to drive? Or I think ever since my dad started with the Angley, I've always wanted to get into a big car. So you've been coming to the races a lot with uh, the family? Yeah, ever since I was about eight. And this is a family thing. Uh, is it kind of cool with uh, your brother and your mom and dad and all hanging out at the drag races? Oh, yeah, I think it's a lot better than if we were all separate because everyone works together to get all the cars ready. And this race also marked the first time in 2006 that all the major players in the Northwest Pro Street scene came together. With record holder Jeremy Devier having sold his Firebird and stepping away, the door was open for a new kingpin to step up. With Dal Sanga breaking early, it basically came down to three racers, all 670 players. Rash Dollawal, Brian Lane, and Jay Sivertson. A dark horse entry were those TPR boys still trying to back up their six-second run at Seattle earlier this year. Here's a look at some of the best hits of the weekend, ending with the Pro Street Final. You wanted that Wally, huh? Bad. In a bad way. Set the record, too. At what? 210.92. Tell us about the people who don't know about this truck. Tell us about it. It's a 57 Cameo pickup with a John Shelby power. It's um, Pro Street Legal. Um, built it all ourselves. It's all carbon fiber. That's about it. And some of the guys that helped you out this weekend, man. Oh, Brian Forrester, Chris Hovey, John Shelby. Uh, Mark Shelby, Johnny Shelby, uh, Kyle Meyer, everyone. That thing kind of fun to drive? Awesome. Best thing ever. So are you going to stay running Pro Street or what are you going to do with it? I'm not sure yet. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you. Get one more. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome hardly describes what this race was all about. So before we end this edition of Horsepower Heaven TV, we'll take a musical moment to show you even more of the deserving people who were all a big part of the 2006 NHRA Lucas Oil Canadian National Open at Mission Raceway Park.
You've been watching Horsepower Heaven Television, presented by Parker's Chrysler and sponsored by Automax USA.